<laughs> well, hey, Kurt, man, it's good to see you. Yeah, good to see you too, man. Thanks for coming over and uh, shooting the shit and, and talking all the things we're going to talk about here on this, on this episode. And uh, So first of all, I want to say thank you for, for uh, protecting uh, the cities that, uh, that you protect you. and that you have protected and that you're going to protect in the future. Uh, you might not always feel that appreciation, but trust me, it's there. All right. Um, let's just get a little background on you. Let's yeah. start there. Uh, cause I mean, I know you went to college, Yeah. so take it away. Um, so yeah, I started out, uh, went, <clears throat> went one year to a community college, uh, starting the law enforcement degree thing. Uh, I'm going to interrupt you already. Yeah. Did you know you wanted to go into law enforcement? Yeah, I pretty much knew since about the age of 10. Cause I had an uncle that was a, uh, Winnebago County deputy and, um, just through talking with him and him sharing stories and stuff, I was like, oh, that's what I want to do. So Hook, pretty much line, from, and sinker, right? Yeah, so from the age <laughs> of 10, um, yeah, which my mom actually has shown me some pictures recently that she found of me at 10 years old with all kinds of crazy police gear. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, yeah, it was clearly in the blood. Yeah, <laughs> it's there. Right. But, uh, but yeah, so I pretty much knew since I was like 10, uh, then went to – Community college for a year, started that process. Then after the, <clears throat> my freshman year, I went over to Western Illinois, which is one of the primary law enforcement schools in the country. Um, I want to say it used to be top five. I don't know what it is now. It's yeah. been a while. But uh, did three years there, graduated from there, included with that was an internship. So I, uh, I interned with Rockford PD. Um, so that was a lot of fun. <laughs> wow. Get to see a lot of cool different stuff there. Well, Rockford's so. a bigger city. It, it is. It's not like it's a small city like, you know, Sharon or Capron or anything right. like that. It's, 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 I mean, what is there, 40,000 people there now, probably? I don't even know. What, where's that? Rockford. Oh, Rock, Rockford's 100. Yeah, exactly. 160. I think they're down to maybe 150. It's starting to come up a bit, but, you know. So there's quite a few people there in a small, small area. Yeah. So I'm sure you definitely, that was... you definitely get your fill. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it gets interesting. I bet it does. Did, so did you, you graduated high school. Mm -hmm. Where did you end up going then? Um, for high school or? I'm sorry, college. College. You graduated college. Yeah, so I graduated college, went to go work uh, at a company where my dad worked at just in the summer because I was applying for a lot of different police departments. Um I was testing out in the suburbs, you know, Rockford area, and then ended up getting hired with uh, Belvedere Police Department. So I started working there for a little bit. Um, shortly after working there, I ended up transitioning to a different department, a uh, smaller department within Winnebago County, but was also within Rockford city limits and ended up staying there 12 years. Yeah, 12 years, and then moved over to the department I'm at now, which has been about two and a half years now. So so let, let's back up a little bit. Yeah. So you got the job, and you transferred over to a smaller department that was part of Rockford. So was Rockford in your jurisdiction then for so, police? So, um, yeah, so, I mean, they weren't – it wasn't part of um, – the city of Rockford? It wasn't part of the city of Rockford Police Department, but it was within the city. So, like, we had our own jurisdiction within the city. However, we'd also help out Rockford on some of their calls and stuff. Just if there was big calls. or Yeah, because, I mean, they're always shorthanded, unfortunately, just with, <laughs> <laughs> with everything going there. And then with the amount of people retiring and people you're trying to get on. It's been a whole nightmare is the whole recruitment process. It's just been horrible. Is that a is that a big problem like oh, like yeah. as far as w why um it's probably been a big problem i would say in the last i'm gonna say five years primarily um you know some of the anti-police rhetoric stuff that's been a big chunk of it i also think it's just a lot of the younger people they just don't want to you know they don't want to get in the military they don't want to get in law enforcement they're looking for these you know big money jobs um, yeah, like podcasting, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, they don't, you know, I mean, you know, I, I mean, law enforcement doesn't always pay the greatest. I mean, it doesn't. We, we get paid pretty decent where I'm at, but um, 
but I mean, it's not one of those things that these younger kids are wanting to go into. And so, um, I well, mean, but you got to remember too, uh, you probably didn't get paid very good your first three, four years. It, I mean, for a single young guy, like it's not bad, but right. you know, for, for people that got families and stuff, I mean, it's, it's pretty tight. It's pretty tight. Yeah. You know, I mean, my first year, which would have been 2000, 2008. I think I was making like forty one thousand. Yeah, I mean that's so to me I was like, man, I'm you're I'm rich. Ball, I'm balling here, <laughs> you know, for being a single guy. Yeah, single guy at 22, 23 yeah. years old. I mean that that that's pretty good money. Yeah, I went yeah. out and bought bought the car I always wanted. So it's like you know, I but, was doing fine. But, but you look at somebody who's married at that point, or is going to get married, or has kids, or anything like that. That's not that great a pay for somebody no. that's putting their life on the line. No, and especially like. I mean, they've started up in the money a little bit here more recently, but which they should. Yeah, but I mean, like, even when I applied for like, uh, let's say, like Rockford for one opening, uh, four hundred applicants, um, Naperville PD, that was, I forget, eight hundred. They actually had to spread it out over two days. Wow. And the reason for that was Naperville was like one of the highest paying departments at that point. Well, of course. <laughs> but I mean, and then we're, all, we're also talking almost 16 years ago, but you know, um, but yeah, just in the last five years, I mean, like you got places like city of Portland where they got 200 openings and they literally get 50 applicants that show up. So, and that's before you weed anybody out. So it's like you have a fourth of what you even need just showing up to the test. That's so, tough. It's crazy. That's tough. And I wonder why that is. I wonder if it's because of the, of the politics up there or the pay or all the above, maybe. I'm, I'm not sure. Probably my guess would be, um, I mean, like Chicago, the politics, just the crime, you know. Um, a lot of these places, you know, the political aspect doesn't have their back. So And then your hands are tied. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure as a police officer, your hands are tied at that point. Yeah, I mean, your hands are tied like um, – you know, for instance, you know, like Portland, they want to, you know, do all these different things with, you know, drug usage and stuff. It's like, you know, okay, well, you can't do anything with it, you know, um, you know, which which is insane to say, hey, we're going to legalize everything. <laughs> you, you know, let me let me let me elaborate on that a little bit. Yeah. So there is a country across the pond over there. And I'm going to lie to you what country it is. Lithuania comes to mind, okay? But I, I don't know if that's for sure. They legalized every drug. Every drug known to man, yeah. they legalized it. Cocaine, heroin, methamphetamines, they've right. legalized it. Because the, here was their thought process. Their thought process is this. We spend hundreds of millions of dollars every year in our crime against drugs. Okay. Right. Well, let's legalize everything, okay? Right. You're going to have... 5% of the people out there that are going to use these drugs no matter what, whether right. they're legal, illegal, they're going to use them. Right. You're going to have probably 2.5% of the population that's going to say, hey, I've always wanted to try that drug. I'm going to try it. Whether they stay with it or not, that's right. up to them. And then you're going to have the whole rest of the population go, well, you legalize cocaine, but I'm good, man. You know yeah. what I mean? And now they're going to go, okay, well, now we're going to turn around and make rehab centers to right. rehab these folks back, and we're going to save hundreds of millions of dollars doing yeah. this. So theoretically, they're looking at it going, we're going to have an uptick right. in users, but that's it. And, yeah. the, and, and you're going to have some of those users that want to get off the drug but don't want to go get help because they're illegal. Now they right. can go get help because it's legal. Right. So their theory is, is their drugs probably are going to go down instead right. of going up. Yeah, and you know, like I can see, it's a, it's an I, interesting it, theory. It's, it's an interesting theory. I mean, I guess, you know, from, you know, just what I'm used to from you know my line of work or whatever, is, and, and like you said, like I mean, let's say like Illinois, they just legalized marijuana not that long ago. Like, you're not seeing a huge influx of people being like, oh man, now that they've legalized weed, like we're gonna go do it. it it's just not the case. You no. know, I mean, you're gonna get the people that maybe were on the fence. Or your typical people that were already doing it. It's not going to be like a, a mass exodus of people wanting to say, hey, let's go do this. And, you know, I think marijuana has its own benefits, too. There's stuff, I mean, there's medical research out there that... Absolutely. ...that, that shows things. Um, you know, from the aspect of, you know, the... Uh, 
um, you know, getting help with it and stuff like that. I mean, I guess where I would see it as is you start legalizing all these things. I mean, we see it all the time. People addicted to whether it's pain pills or or strung out on cocaine or, or this mm-hmm. or that, you know, they're not holding down jobs. Well, the only way to go do that is to go do crime. So then you see an uptick in crime because they need to get that drug that they're addicted to. Totally makes sense. And so then you see an uptick of, you know, theft and vehicle theft or, you know, theft from motor vehicles or, you know, I mean, look at the the stores right now. (laughs) I mean, it's just insane. Some of these places where they're just looting stuff. And obviously some of those are just to make money, but yeah, you know, just for whatever reason, but you you definitely see an uptick in thefts and, and all kinds of other stuff, you know, batteries, assaults, Stuff like that. So that's where I think the whole negative connotation of if you just legalize everything, it's just going to turn into a... It could be bad. A crapshoot. It, it, it very well could be bad. But it, I just thought that, that that theory and that testing that they're doing over there is going to be very interesting to see what the results are going to be. It would be. And they just did that, like, don't quote me, four or five months ago, six months ago. So yeah. it's super early in the testing. But right. it'll be interesting to see what the, those statistics are after a year. It will be. Just, I mean, just to be... And it's just like the new, uh, the safety act. You know, there's not enough data now to see how that's working. What's your opinion on that? So, I, what for those that don't know what the safety act is, can you explain a little bit more what that is? Yeah, so it's um, basically pretrial release, which, uh, you know, let's say you arrest somebody for a nonviolent crime, because that's what it pretty much all kind of boils down to. And what's a nonviolent crime is? So, um, so let's say we get somebody who, you know, steal something from a local store, you know, um, let's say 200 bucks or something worth of stuff. You pretty much, um, you know, fill out all the paperwork. They're arrested. So, I mean, they're physically put in handcuffs. You know, you do all the same process. However, they're not brought down to the jail. Um, You know, I mean, we have the ability to, where I work at, you know, we can process at RPD or we can also take them to county. But... If it's a nonviolent crime and it doesn't meet a threshold, which the state's laid out an entire threshold of, you know, things that are detainable. So, you know, if let's just say it's a basic theft, you know, you fill out the paperwork, here's your court date, on their way. Um, as far as, you know, a domestic battery or something like that, I mean, you're, you're going to jail. I was just going to say, you can know. you elaborate on some of those that you can take them down there? Yes, yeah, so, I mean, like, aggravated offenses, um, you know, I mean, you know, which aggravating factors can constitute, you know, whether it be elderly or somebody special needs, you know. Against Girlfriend, somebody, boyfriend, uh, wife, against, against, husband. Um, yeah, de- I mean, depending on, on relationship and stuff. So, like, teachers, uh, medical personnel, um, you know, police officers, firefighters, stuff like that. But... Um, but yeah, I mean, so some of those aggravating factor ones, anything violent, you know, you, you know, like a battery or something, you know, and the theory behind it is, is the people that are nonviolent. So like, you know, I do a lot of traffic stuff, you know, you get somebody with a suspended driver's license, you know, um, in the past, we had the ability to take them to county if you wanted. Um, a lot of times we didn't just because we had the option to give them a notice to appear and, and whatnot. So, but now if it's just a driving suspended, there's not even an option. You can't even take them to County. You pretty much issue them their, their tickets. And then let them drive the car away on a suspended license. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so no, they, <laughs> that's, and that's what a lot of people would think too, but I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it's it just, it clicked it, in my head. I had to say it. <laughs> I, I will say in, in some jurisdictions, I do things a little different. In mine, we actually, you know, we, we issue them the citations. We give them their mandatory court date. Um, we give them their pretrial release form, which basically is um, basically a trade-off of going to jail, so to speak. It's basically advising them, hey, this is when you need to be to court or whatnot, and then the vehicle's towed. So they still have to, you know, they have to pay to get the, the vehicle, vehicle towed. towed. Their license is taken because it's suspended, so we can send those back to the state. But, um, but yeah, so, I mean, I've seen, I know there was a lot of people against it, especially a lot of police officers against it. 
you know, I'm not a huge fan of it. However, there are some things that have worked out better than I thought, to be honest with you. Can you elaborate? Yeah. So, I mean, the main example I'll use is like the, the driving ones. Um, you know, it's pretty much, you know, you're just, you can take care of all that stuff in your squad because you're either handwriting the tickets or you're printing the tickets out. You print out one extra form. We don't have to take them down to the police department to process them. We don't have to fingerprint them. We don't have to do photographs. We don't have to do all that stuff. So it's really making your job a little bit easier. It's making ours a little bit more, it's a little easier and it's a little more efficient, I guess I should say. Okay. uh, On that aspect. Then you see some instances where it's like, they're not detaining on this. (laughs) And it's like. Probably should. (laughs) Yeah, I know. So that's up to the officer's discretion then and how they want to handle that. If it's not in the assault or battery where you have to detain them. So the other stuff is up to the officer's discretion or it's these offenses. You're just going to safety act it. These offenses are booking for county. Yeah, booking for jail. It's pretty much, for the most part, drawn out for us. So it's black um, and white then. For the most part, I mean, there's some that we'll call the state's attorney on if there's kind of a gray area, but um, the county kind of came out with a, a spreadsheet type thing, you know, with all these different arrows and boxes. And <laughs> if they've done this, you know, which I go mean, to yes, go to no. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And I mean, to be fair, in the very start. Like it was no, like, I get it. It, it was kind of helpful because it's like it's, there's so much different stuff in there that you really kind of have well, there's to. There's so many laws that you guys have to know, and there's there are. so many rules and, and you know, Little parentheses nuances. rules, you yeah. know, that, that, that you guys should follow or shouldn't follow. So right. to have that guideline when it first came out, I'm sure that was a huge help for you guys, oh, especially yeah. you guys that are out beating the streets. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I, you know, I'm, I'm personally not, you know, a huge fan on some of it, but there's been some positives. And, I mean, to be quite frank, like, I mean, I've dealt with plenty of people that I've arrested where it's like before the safety act I had the option to, um, I could either, you know, release them from the PD after processing them because we do our photographs, fingerprints, all that stuff right at our PD. Um but you had the option to either take them to county or, you know, give them basically a notice to appear, which was basically a mandatory court date. And for nine times out of ten on those, I, I was just wanting, you know, write an NTA. And, I, you know, it's a traffic thing. A lot of these people are trying to just get to work or, you know, raise their kids or, you know, take their kids places and stuff. We're still like, human. We're, yeah, we're still day. human. Like, I, I, don't, I don't, I'm not one of those people that's like, Oh, I wrote, I wrote 25 tickets today or, Oh, I arrested five people today. Like, you know, like, and especially some of them, like where you're towing their car, you know, I, that's expensive. I, it, it, it sucks. Especially now. I mean, when, when you got, you know, like a single mom who's just trying to make ends meet, especially now with the economy and you're sitting there and you're trying to, you know, try and tell them, you know, we're towing the car, how much a, it costs for the, uh, you know, the, the toe, the, the toe plus the actual fee for like the um, police department and all that, or for the city or whatever. Um, so, I mean, it just gets expensive. Some of that we have some, some leeway on per officer. I mean, we can, we have some discretion, but um, you know, some, it's just a mandatory toe. Like there's just no discretion there. I mean, we just have to like a suspended it. license, <laughs> like, like, like suspended or like, you know, DUI or, you know, something like that. Yeah. I mean, for because there's a, a 12 hour hold that you got to put on that car because obviously you don't want them getting tanked going out, you know, getting, yeah, that's like, not good. picking up the car, you know, an hour later and yeah, and whatnot. But I mean, even the suspended, depending on what it is, you know, like I said, I'm not out there to try and just totally ruin somebody's, you know, day month. or life, yeah, you know, when you're making 500 bucks a week, and, and I think the majority you know, of Police officers are like yourself. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, the, there's there's no doubt about that. I mean, the the departments I've worked at, for the most part, everybody's you know pretty good with the communities as far as you know. We always kind of go behind the motto, and I've always used it. You know, treat somebody how you want would want to be treated. Absolutely. And so you know, if you're respectful with me, you know, and I agree with the whole thing of 
they're not stupid people that you just did a stupid decision. I mean, we've I mean, all done it. I got a kid. I, I get it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, he, he does stupid stuff all the time, <laughs> but doesn't mean I don't love him. You know, well, he mean, definitely gets that from his father. huh? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Some people would agree with you on that, but uh, you know, I mean, it's just, you know, they do so make some stupid I, decisions we, and stuff, like, and it is what it is. Like I, mean, I said, man, we're all human. We're, we're exactly. all going to make mistakes, right? Whether oh, yeah. it's in a vehicle and we thought we could beat the yellow light and we didn't or right. w- whatever. Right. We're all going to make mistakes. And it's great that we have people in our lives right. that can make sure that we don't make that mistake twice. Right. That's the way I look at it. And that's what a lot of it is. Um, you know, know, first mistake, shame on me, right? Second right. mistake... Probably shame on me, even though, depending on the yeah. situation, could be shame on you. You know what I right. mean? But if you have somebody that can correct that mistake the first time, you probably won't make that mistake again. Right. And a lot of times, I mean, when I first started, it was taught, you know, there's um, great things come out of, as you would call them, educational stops. You know, you stop some, you know, 16-year-old who's out speeding, you know, not doing anything super crazy, but they're speeding. Hey, man, like, this is the speed limit. I guarantee that most of those 16-year-olds are, are driving for the next few miles, a couple days. A couple <laughs> weeks. A couple weeks, you know, going the limit. I mean, it happened to me, so, you know, when I was 16. And it's like... I think it's happened to every one of us oh, when yeah. we were 16. So uh, there's a lot of good in just doing educational, you know, thing. And, and we're not trying to totally screw your life up. So when you worked for the first police department uh, yeah. over there that you talked about were you in your own squad car then at that point yeah yeah um so i was in city of, of belvedere um i actually left during the the field training portion of it so i wasn't physically on my own at that point because you go through the field training process yeah so i left there and then jumped over to the department i was at for 12 years um and went over there, which was a lot nicer. And you were in your own car and everything yeah. like that. So you, so how does that work with, maybe you can't say this, but maybe you can. I'm going to ask it anyway. Yeah. Um, do you guys have your own, like, jurisdictions in the police department that you're at? Like, oh, I'm, yeah. you're, you're, you and three other police officers are going to take the northeast side. And you and two other police officers, or two right. other police officers are going to take the northwest side. Or how, how right. does that work, like, especially in your bigger cities? Yeah. So, I mean, um, you know, I'll just use Rockford as an, as an example because I've grown up and lived in Rockford my whole life. Um, so, basically, there's – they had 10 areas. Now it's went to 12. Um, and you basically have so many officers per per area or, you know, some cities, you know, like they call them districts or – Yeah. You know, because Rockford's actually went from a one police department to three districts. Yeah. Um, but they got 12 areas, and they have a certain number of officers per, per area. area. You know, some areas have a little bit more. Some have a little bit less. You know, some Makes of it's sense. Just based on crime. You know, yeah. I mean, if yeah. you're, you know, if you're looking at million-dollar homes and there's hardly any crime there. Why have you, five police officers You're going to put your resources out a little bit more. we got other issues going on. Totally get it. But, um, but, yeah, so, I mean, that's primarily how they do it for the most part. Um, like I said, Chicago is a little different. You know, I'm not 100%. Well, Chicago is a little Everything's different. Everything's different in Chicago, <laughs> but I'm not exactly sure how they, I mean, they have their, their districts and yeah. stuff, but how they do, I mean, they got a lot of different units. Like, I mean, Rockford has a lot of different units too. You got your traffic units, you got your patrol units, you got your gang units, your, you know, um, you got your scope units, which you're not even going to know who they are or where they're at. Um, if you're just Joe Citizen, you know, um, they're pretty low key, out of sight. The way they I, should be. I call them like ninjas. <laughs> you know, uh, they're called scope for a reason. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, you, you don't really know where they're at. And a lot so. of your big cities have those. Oh yeah. So I know some of them were trying to get rid of them for a while, but yeah, I'm not not, sure. not a good idea in my opinion. But. Nah, it, 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 pros and cons. Yeah. Right. And pros and cons. I think there's more pros to keeping them yeah. than getting rid of them. But um, I mean, for your you know, for your high crime areas or like, let's say events or stuff like that. Like you want some plain clothes people doing some stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You want to keep them hidden gonna, to keep them. People aren't doing stupid stuff in front of you typically. 
<laughs> when you're wearing a uniform is what yeah. you're saying. No, no, yeah, Typically, totally get it. I mean, there's always some that amaze you. I'm sure after they've, I'm sure, I'm sure you've seen it after people have had a few beverages. Uh, they probably don't give a shit. You know? <laughs> <laughs> You know, people wanting pictures. It's like, no. <laughs> well, come on. You don't want to be the local celebrity PD guy over there or what? I'll, 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 I'll take them for kids, but uh, <laughs> but as far as for, uh, yeah, some drunk person walking out of the bar, no, I'm good. <laughs> what if I'm the drunk guy? <laughs> You're different. <laughs> you have different qualifications. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, so what are you considered then? Were you considered traffic or patrol or... I was, I've always been patrol. Patrol. Yeah. So, um, I, you know, I've either done patrol or done training stuff. You know, I've never never done detective or anything like that. Is that yeah. something you want to do? When I was younger, I thought it would be. But um, I know we were talking before we I came on or whatever, and I just came off light duty. <laughs> and that just uh, doing that just made me realize how much I like doing my job. Um, I don't like being inside. I mean, I was stuck inside for six weeks, you know, kind of pushing paper. Can you say what happened or no? Yeah. Why I, you I on just, light duty? Yeah. I, so I just totally ripped my, ripped my knee up. So that was not enjoyable, but, um, ACL, MCL, uh, meniscus. So yeah, yeah I totally shredded yeah. that thing. So that was not fun, but slowly, you know, getting back, but now I'm able to, to work again. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's, you know, stuck in the office. I mean, yeah, as a detective, you get out, get to do different stuff. It's just, you know, like me and one of my coworkers say, you know, we like the streets, <laughs> you know, <laughs> this we, is where we belong. Yeah, we just, I, I just like being out there and, you know, you're kind of, kind of your own boss in a sense, cause you're driving around, um, on your own, doing your own stuff within reason, obviously. I mean, you got certain things you got to do, um, and we got supervisors, you know, looking out, making sure we're doing what we're supposed to be doing as well, which is fine. But yeah, I think patrol, that's kind of more my, so tell me some things when you're thing. out, when you're out patrolling, you, you get to work in the morning and the, in the evening, wh whenever your hours are, cause yeah. you've had lots had of different hours. Different yeah. All different hours through the years. Um, tell me some things you're looking for when you're, when you're out patrolling uh, that, that probably the normal citizen wouldn't know that you're actually looking for um so uh, when i start out my patrol i pretty much i like to just whatever area i'm assigned to yeah. for that day you know i'm checking if i'm working mornings i'm checking to see about anything odd standing out from houses um you know if something's been tampered with something you know looking at different front doors cars, kicked in or anything front like that. doors garage doors um fences you know um as far as like on the street you know i'm just to be whatever i mean for some reason everybody that's doing something no good likes to hang out at gas stations <laughs> very early in the morning <laughs> i'm just saying <laughs> so if it's worked for you this far it's so, got to be kind of true uh, it's just you know it is what it is um but I mean, yeah, I'm looking for a lot of different things. <clears throat> I'm looking for anywhere people are congregating. If there's a big, you know, group congregating, if there's a bunch of cars in a, a spot that I know there shouldn't really be cars over there. Um, looking at specific buildings or abandoned buildings where I know people shouldn't be at, but there's more cars there. Um, you know, stuff that just you kind of out of the to, ordinary. Yeah, you get to know what's kind of the norm. Um, so you're kind of looking for stuff outside of that, you know, other than that, I'm just kind of, you know, driving around, seeing what's, what's going on as far as traffic wise. Um, you know, like I said, different neighborhoods, business districts, stuff like that. So definitely. You're just keeping those. your eye on their community. You're yeah. making sure nothing's out of place when you've seen it a certain way for so long. And if something's out of place, then a red light goes right. off in your head. Yeah. And typically something will, you know, stand out to you. Um, I know after being out for, you know, a couple months being stuck in the office, I didn't really drive around that much in the, in the city. I, occasionally I'd have to run stuff to and from the courthouse or something, but, um, 
I'd be driving around the community and be like, well, when did that show up? <laughs> <laughs> you know, everybody's like. I don't remember that being there. Yeah, and it's like, you know, they laugh because they know I haven't been there. I haven't been out driving around, so. But, yeah, I mean, it definitely pops out, you know, like, and it, it's not that same thing, but that's how it is, you know, when you're patrolling and you're used to a normal thing. It's it's like a, a brand new business going up. Like, it pops out to you. Yeah. I know we talked off air on this, but I want to, yeah. I want to bring this up because some of the stuff that you had told me earlier. So do you prefer day shift or do you prefer night shift? Personally, I prefer nights. Um, you know, I mean, as far as both have a, a positive and negatives to them, I prefer nights. I just like the more amped up calls, you know, most people that get in law enforcement are adrenaline junkies. So I like that adrenaline of you like the adrenaline of going to a call. Go, go, go. Um, so I like I like nights and it's just the way it is. You know, you got more more crime and more stuff going on at nighttime, more events. All more people stuff. are home at night. Yeah. Most people aren't at work. Most people yeah. are at home with their families or, you know, weekends are usually partying it up doing something. Oh, yeah. So uh, bars are usually a lot more active at that point in time. Definitely. Makes a whole lot of sense yeah. to me. So you got a lot more exciting calls now. You talk to you know, I mean, I've, I'm going on year 16, but, you know, I've, I switched departments, just, I, I needed to change pace, different scenery, you know, which a lot of people are doing right now, just because everybody's trying to poach from somewhere else, because there's not enough police to go around, but. Here in uh, Illinois, you're talking, at least anyway. Yeah, yeah, here in Illinois. Um, but, uh, you know, you get to some of these guys that are, you know, getting close to 20, 30 years at the same department, and they're getting close to retirement, they want day shift. I mean, they've done their time, you know. You still get some that are like, go, 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 go. <laughs> it's funny. But, it, it's funny that you mentioned that because I can bring up something that, <clears throat> that I've seen through my my careers. <laughs> and that is I find that when people get closer to retirement, they truly don't give a shit. They just yeah. want to get to retirement. And, yeah. I, and I've seen that, and it doesn't matter what career you're in. Oh, no. Just give me the easy road from here on out. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That's how my dad was. Because I'm, you know? I'm, I mean, I'm X amount of days, X amount of months, X amount of years away. I just want to get there, yeah. and then I don't care anymore. Yeah. I so mean, that my, makes total sense when you said, you know, guys have 25 years and they're taking day shift and they're like, we're just cruising yeah. around, making sure everything's kosher. So we can yeah. five years, we can retire and life is good, you know? Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. And nothing. Like I, and like I said, you know, I was going to say it before you opt in. I mean, it's pretty much every job. I think, I mean, my dad was the same way. Unfortunately, you know, he died before he, could, before he could retire. No, fine. But, um, yeah, you know, he was trying to ride out the last three years and just be like, Looking forward to retirement. So I think that's pretty much everybody. Yeah. Well, I mean, think about it. At that point in time, most of us have put in 45, 50 years of work, and we're like, okay, what's it like not going to work? Yeah. (laughs) I kind of want to know what that's like. (laughs) Yeah, which, you know, retirement sounded great in theory to me until I got hurt, and then it's like when I was stuck at home for three months, I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to do that. (laughs) You You'll know, find I something. can only do so much fishing and stuff, you know. <laughs> only so much fishing? No uh, yeah. such thing. I mean, every day, in my opinion. I could do it every damn day and not even feel bad about it. I mean, <laughs> I mean, we talked about, you know, like, here, you know, like, I don't mind, you know, fishing Wisconsin, stuff like that. We were talking about saltwater fishing mm-hmm. before we got on. Mm-hmm. And, you know, yeah, I could go do some trips and do some of that stuff. You know, you kidding me? I already know what's going to happen. You're going to own a boat long before you retire and you're going to be taking weekend trips. Cause got to remember, I got a boat now and I don't even use it. Well, (laughs) but you got to remember you got kids at home and all that kind of stuff in 15, 20 years, your kids are all going to be out of the house doing their own thing. It's going to be you and the wife. And it's going to be like, what are we going to do today? I don't know. Let's go fishing. You can read, (laughs) you can either fish with me. You can read a book. You can listen to music. You can do whatever the hell you want, but I'm going fishing. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. No, yeah, I mean, you bring up a great point. It, <laughs> it's sad because I have a fishing boat that's literally just sat for two years. I've got it out once in two years because... We'll have to change that. Just, what's that? We'll have to change that. Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> unfortunately just different circumstances, stuff with work, stuff, you know, personal stuff I get at it. home. I get it. And man. it gets crazy, and it's like, God, I just want to fish. I owned a boat when I was younger. Actually, I owned two boats when I was younger. And it, and it got to that point, too, where you know, I was 
22 years old and it was chaotic, you know, I was yeah. working and, and, you know, farming on the side and, you know, that was, at that point in time I was chasing chicks and oh, it yeah. just, you didn't have time to do what you wanted to do. It was, no. you do, you did what you had to do. Yeah. In 30 years from now or 25 years from now, for yeah. you, 15, right? Yeah. Still 30 and out for cops, right? Yeah, but um, when I switched apartments, so the part that kind of kind of sucked, but, I mean, it, they changed. They went from Tier 1 to Tier 2. So there's, like, two different tiers of retirement pension. So I was in Tier 1. Um, when I switched departments, unfortunately, I switched over to Tier 2. So I know what that is. I'm on Tier 2. Yeah, so, I mean, it still works out. I still got my retirement Tier 1. Just got to wait a few the, extra years. The, I, I can collect that um, at 50, and then... Uh, once I do, you know, I can do the earliest you can collect is 55 on tier two. And you got to have, you know, at least 10 years. Most guys shoot for 20 or 30. At, at 55, I'll have exactly 20. So it works out kind of perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So you, know. you got you got 20, 20 years left, basically. 17 and a half, but who's coming? I was yeah. giving taken <laughs> here. Not, Come on now. You never know. I might go <laughs> past 55. We'll see. You might. <laughs> You might get one of those cushy gravy jobs that you really like to do and just ride it out. Hopefully I make it that long. We'll see. <laughs> oh God, yeah, you will. <laughs> how do you like the how do you like moving from the old police department that you were at to the new police department that you're at? Because I'm assuming yeah. it's a smaller police department, correct? For here? Yeah, from or, from where from I'm where at. you from where you came from. Um it was actually a little bit smaller where I was. Oh, really? Yeah, it was actually a little bit smaller just because of um, we weren't Rockford PD. But like I said, we were a, a smaller agency within Winnebago County, but our jurisdiction was in Rockford. Gotcha. If that makes sense. It does. Um, you mentioned the name before, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I mean, it. I mean, the main reason, I was just looking for something different as far as different... Uh, um, you know, d- d- had different goals set up, had different uh, things I wanted to accomplish. Um, it wasn't a bad department I was at. It's just, you know, sometimes you get somewhere where you get comfortable. You've been there so long. And I kind of was actually debating on if I wanted to stay in law enforcement at all and maybe go do something else. Um, but the, m- the more I got talking to other people and different jobs and stuff like that, um it was pretty apparent that they kind of made the decision for me because it's like, <laughs> oh, you got a degree in law enforcement. Oh, you've done law enforcement for X, Y, Z years. Like, what do you know about this? You know, so it would have entailed me going back to school and doing something, and I wasn't really looking forward to that road. Um, so, which there's nothing against it. It's just no, not no. something that, not something that was for me. Um, but you know, in switching, I definitely I got that drive back to want to. You know, it felt like I was new again. So I'm well, looking forward to Well, kind of you were, right? Yeah. Uh, you, yeah, you're I moving mean, to a new a new town, a new city, a new city with, with, with new co-workers and a new captain right. and everything. So you are kind of new again. Yeah. I mean. And, and it's nice to, you know, I don't care who you are, if you're a cop or not, you know, your first day at somewhere else, you're a little edgy. You know, you're like, okay, how's this going to go? The, ner- <laughs> the nerves are always yeah, a there. a little bit of nerves. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, it was good, and you know, I enjoy all the people I work with. Um, all of them? Wow, good yeah. for you. <laughs> I mean, it's actually it's actually pretty pretty crazy because the last two departments I've been at, there's only been one person that I I really didn't care for. Well, you're 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 so an easy guy to get along with, though. I am. You I are. Mean, you're I, you're yeah. like me. I, I feel that our personality is very similar. That we might not like each other, but as long as we yeah. respect each other, we're going to be fine. Oh, yeah. You know, and I feel like you're that, that you're that way. I'm that way. Uh, I might not be the biggest fan of you, but you respect me. You respect right. me. We're gonna be good. Yeah. You know. I mean, it's just like um, lost my train of that thought there. But um, you know, if you talk to my sergeant, he'll tell you that I just he's like, God, he doesn't shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so he'll eventually watch us, and he'll, and he'll he's like, God damn, you shut up. <laughs> But you'd you know. be like, God, you talk a lot, Kurt. No, mm. I got the same thing. I talk a lot too. So I got that was from my first week there. And I said, well, my dad was a salesman for, you know, 
VP of sales for 30 years, so I kind of, you know. The apple don't fall far yeah. from the tree. That's what they say. Sometimes it's nice, sometimes it's not. <laughs> Tell me some of the wildest calls you've been on, if you can. Yeah. Um, Just to kind of so, go into, so what, and something unique that maybe the the normal person listening to this would be like, whoa, that is pretty cool, or the wow, that is shocking, or yeah, something like that. Um, yeah, so I mean, and, and I always get that typically because I'll do some some stuff at my kid's school, you know, go in. The teachers know what I do, so they always ask if I – so I kind of prepare for that. Fortunately for you, I can actually share some of them there. And <laughs> like, yeah, I, I got a little bit more than PG rated is yeah, what you're saying. I got to uh, kind of rein it in there. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, I know, like, uh, one that stands out is, you know, working in Rockford, you know – you're going to see homicides. Um, it's just the way it is over there. Um, so the one that stands out to me is not far from where I was working for my juris- jurisdiction. You know, a call went out for a fight. So I'm like, okay, well, you know, it's you know, right down the road, literally. I'm like, eh, there's nothing going on where I'm at, so I'll just start heading that way. And Rockford's always shorthanded, so I was like, I'll help him out. So I always get over there and, let dispatch know I'm there because we shared frequency with their dispatch and get to uh, get to the house, go out there. It's this, this old guy. He's like, hey, I heard somebody yelling for help over there. I'm like, all right. You know, like I've had this before. It's typically just kind of like nothing comes of it. So I'm like, okay, well, the layout of the property was kind of weird. So I'm like, okay, where at? And he's like, oh, around those trees. I'm like, well, the trees just keep going. He's like, well, I'll sh- get it, come out and show you. So normally I wouldn't have somebody show me, but. You didn't know where you were going. Yeah. So he uh, he starts walking. I told him to stand back a little bit, but just kind of, you know, guide me to where he's going. And finally he's like, yeah, make a right. So I make a right, go around this tree line. And as soon as I turn and look, I'm like, oh, sh- you know, crap. I'm like, dude, you need to go get in your house. Um at which point I start radioing to Rockford. And as I'm rounding that that turn, um, guy just laying there on pavement. It was like a sidewalk going between a house and a garage. And he's just laying there. And, I mean, he's, he's, he's dead. But there's a trail of blood everywhere. There's blood up on the, the door. The door to the house is open. There's blood on the garage door. Um, you know, and I'm like, I don't know if this guy's – inside the house, if there's a guy in the garage. So at this point, I'm pretty much standing back waiting um, for other units to show up because I'm not putting myself out there. In danger. To, yeah, to get ambushed by somebody from in the house, the garage, or somewhere else. Um, but, I mean, this guy literally, yeah, I mean, the, the guy took a rock, of all things, um, and just bludgeoned the guy to death with a rock. Damn. So. I mean, it was it was pretty pretty gruesome. gruesome. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. I, you know, I'd share some more, but I don't know if that might be too much for your viewers or not. But <laughs> that that's a tough one. Let's just say that's that a tough one to come up upon. The guy that showed up to do CPR, yeah, it wasn't wasn't good. So, but but yeah, at that point, I was just holding down the house, you know, with my weapon drawn, just not knowing. What's you know, going on? Yeah, and what actually ultimately ended up happening was we found out who who the uh, the guy was or what his description was. And uh, he actually, we thought, we weren't sure, but he drove past the house later on as we're all out there investigating this thing. And, you know, we're like, oh, crap. I kind of saw some Rockford units chased him down. I don't know if they caught him or not because I was too busy doing other stuff. But it was just not too long after that where ultimately the guy ended up getting caught and we found out who he was. And wow, so, well, that's great. So that, that at was, least you found the at least you found the culprit on that. Yeah, that that one stands out. There's been a couple, you know, fights with shots fired. Okay, give me a funny one. A funny. You got to have a funny one. I don't care if it's a <laughs> if it's a closing bar argument yeah. with somebody or something you got to have yeah. one that you're just like what the hell so it's, <laughs> all right so <laughs> there's a couple that come to mind but i'm gonna i'm gonna use one from my 
last job as well. Um, so we're going to, or I'm going to a different property um, that I was supposed to go check. And call comes out. I, I don't know why I, why I backed up Rockford with some of the stuff, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> I, you got I, some good stories to yeah, tell. I mean, I was honestly, it, it was fun, you know, working in that area, getting able to help those guys. But um, and they helped us out, absolutely. But um, it was uh, some call. It actually started out as a serious call about some somebody wanting to jump out of a moving car on Perryville Road. In Rockford, which I don't know if you're familiar with. Yeah, Rockford, oh yeah, but it's absolutely. Ba- basically, yeah, the main a, road. It's a very busy road. Yeah, it's 45, but you know, par for the course is pretty much like 55, yeah. 60. <laughs> so, I mean, they're driving, and the passenger's threatening to jump out of the car, um, just having a bad day or whatever. And so, I start heading that way. the The caller ends up pulling in over by the uh, by the Woodman's over there, mm-hmm. in a it wasn't the Woodman's parking lot, but another parking lot. And uh, she jumps. She doesn't jump out of the car. The friend actually pulls over. I'm the first one there, and all of a sudden, I just see hair and a, a chick running out of the passenger side of the car. And she, I barely can get out of my car, and she's running towards me. And she's like, help me, help me, help me. And I'm like, what? Like, what is going on, you know? And she starts swearing up and down about the, the driver and how she's trying to kill her and this and that. And I, I'm just trying to figure out what's going on here. In the meantime, she's basically half naked because she basically just has a top on and that's it. Um, and she had told me that she was, I'm radioing this in, by the way, like what everything's going on at the time. And... Long story short, she ends up running from me, so then I have to chase her down and end up getting her on the ground and, you know, cuffing her or whatever until I can figure out what's going on here. And she was a, let's just say, a performer at a gentleman's club in Rockford, (laughs) and she did not get the position she wanted um, with the establishment. So Mm. she was quite upset that she didn't get that position. (laughs) So she, she was highly intoxicated, but, um, yeah, I mean, when she got flung in the – well, not flung, but it's a bad word to use. But when she got, <laughs> when she got, put, when she got put in the car um, with Rockford PD, it was, uh, was kind of comical. But, I mean, it, there were a lot of units that showed up to that. Yeah, I bet. I a, which, looking back at it, it's like if you say a half-naked person, you're going to get a lot of – a lot of people. A lot of people up. showing up. Yeah. yeah, that makes total sense. I mean, it's no different. You say, "Hey, some guys run down the street naked." Like, yeah, I'm, everybody's gonna look. Yeah, no shit. I mean, whether we want to or not, we're still looking. I mean, yeah. <laughs> that's just you know one of those. What? <laughs> I'm gonna switch topics here for just a minute. I'm assuming you guys have to go through continuing education. Yeah. How often does that happen? Um, so with the state, it's gotten um, a little bit more. Obviously, with the Safety Act, they require a little bit more, which I'm a huge proponent of. Yeah, I don't. Have, I have no problem with it. So, and there's a couple of things I'll kind of elaborate on, I guess. Um, you know, obviously, you go through the initial um, police training, <clears throat> the police academy, which there's a couple different ones in the state, but they all abide by the same standards and the same materials are taught. So, it went when I was there. It was 12 weeks. Then it got moved to 14 weeks. And then from 14 weeks, now it's currently 16 weeks. So went from three months to four months. Um, then on top of that, you know, you got so many state mandates. You have to have uh, so many hours of certain things every year, whether it's like civil law updates, um, criminal law updates. You know, Which you, makes sense because laws are changing. Oh, yeah, all the time. Every freaking every day, July, it seems like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, every July 1st, there's new laws that come out. Absolutely. Which, there's like 20 or 30 of them, and it's like. And even January, even it seems like every them. January 1st, there's there's new laws that come yeah. out, too. So Yeah, they're just constantly changing. So, you, you know, you, you want to stay up on that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's state mandates for, you know, use of force, which is a big one. Um, you know, firearm stuff. 
you know, on yeah, that. Because you got to be certified. I'm assuming you have to be certified with your firearm too, correct? Yeah. And you got to. You. I'm assuming you have to have so many hours of training for that as well. Yeah. So you you have so many train, and they break it down um, every year, every two years, three years, and five years. Okay. So, so it's not like biannually or anything like that. No. So for firearms, it's like yearly. Okay. Um, certain certain topics, it might be just once every five years. So gotcha. That's more or less not super prevalent. Um, you know, they've really been hitting home the um, the uh, mental health stuff, which I'm a huge proponent of. Agreed. Um, just because there is so many issues with that. And, you know, a lot of these people that are on the drugs, you know, like what they're doing is they're just trying to self-medicate. Yep. A lot of them. Anytime you see a drug addict, for the most part, you're going to find a mental health issue Somewhere in there. 100%. Whether it's okay. anxiety, depression. Um, so I've always used that, you know, or remember to keep that in the back of my mind because, you know, I had a family member commit suicide. They were bipolar and self-medicated. And, you know, so it's, that you sucks. know, when you're kind of familiar with it, you know how that can go down. So yep. I kind of have a soft spot for some of that stuff um, as far as helping people. But, um, but yeah, as far as the, the mandates that, you know, it, it varies depending on the what situation it is. and what it is. Yeah. Um, which, you know, I know <laughs> it was a couple of years back and I was talking to one of my old sergeants and, you know, some of the older guys that I knew, they were complaining, oh, this is ridiculous. You know, 12 weeks, 16 weeks, next thing you know, it's going to be this. And to be honest, Illinois was behind the times quite a bit. Really? I think. Um, you know, I mean, if you look at it, Cosmetology, if you go based off hours, like cosmetology school, um, barber school, I forget the exact word for whatever that niche is, but uh, they actually had more training hours than for a police officer who's got to sit, carry a gun and ultimately make a decision between life and death at some point. Hopefully you don't have to. No, that's the goal but, is you don't have to. Yeah, but just the thought of that, it's like, these people are doing yeah, that's more schooling and training than police officers. Like, that's a problem. And that I never is. thought about it until no. he brought that up. I, I, I wouldn't have thought about that either until you just brought it up. Yeah, and so, like, a guy I went to the academy with, uh, I was a roommate with him. He was actually a former officer for Vegas Metro. So they have a metro department or whatever. So, But he ended up coming back. His dad was failing in health, so he came back to help his dad. And he came back, and we're sitting there talking about Vegas and how it is out there. And he's like, oh, our, our academy is six months. I'm like, six months? Yeah, and he's like, their physical agility stuff's totally different. Their training's totally different. Wow, six and, months. And it's like, and here we are. He's like, this is half the time, you know? And so it, it just kind of shows that Illinois has been a little bit behind the, the curve on some of that stuff, you know? And, and it's not saying that we're – you know, uneducated or, right. or not knowing what we're doing. But I always think as being somebody that trains people at the last two departments I've been at, I mean, there's always room for improvement. There's always room Absolutely. to learn new stuff. hundred percent. You know, I, I don't care if you've done the job for 40 years, you're going to learn something at some point. Agreed. You know, and just like any other job, yep. you know, you know, I mean, yep. you don't know everything. <laughs> you're not gonna, and you're not gonna know everything. The, right. The thing that you got to do is just, Sit down, say, okay, what can we improve on today? Yeah. Might be something minute. It might be something major. What yeah. can we improve on today at this job, at this career, at this position, at this business, right. your business, whatever? What can we improve on today that's going to make our lives better and make us smarter moving forward? Oh, yeah. That's what you have to do. Yeah, and at the end of the day, like, you know, some officers will, oh, I got to go to training, you know. Oh, I got, you know, but at the end of the day, I mean, it helps protect you, you know, and us and, and us on this regular citizens it helps, too. It helps protect both. Um, and like what I tell like with the body cams, um, I was just going to bring that up too. I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> you know, I, I love them, you know, um, I cause now that's a, that's a mandatory thing for Illinois, correct? Yeah. So it goes based off agency size. Um, so we've had them, you know, the, when I switched departments, it's the first one I've been to that had body cam. You know, when I first started, body cams weren't even out. But no. um, the department I was at, they're allowed to 
to go up till I think the end of 2025. I think by 2025, every single department has to have them. So they still haven't gotten them, I don't think. You know, just because smaller departments are, you know, they had money. But you go to some of these towns down southern Illinois. Yeah, you know, where there's they don't 800 have the people in a town. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's not just the, the body cam itself. It's you got to pay the fees to have all that footage stored, saved. I mean, it doesn't go away. There's a certain process for that stuff to get deleted, and, and you have to follow a process. Correct. Um, bigger departments, they have, like, their own civilian their own employees, s- and their, sure. their full-time job is to review footage. Um and, you know, figure out if it can be saved, deleted or not. But, yeah, I'm a firm believer in it. I mean. You like them. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it protects you from, from you know, people saying that you did something that you didn't do. Um, that's the biggest one. But it also, I guess, also the, in the same uh, capacity as far as uh, it, it shows exactly what you're seeing, you know. Um because when you write in a report and try to explain something to somebody, you know, at the end of the day, depending on what the situation is, either the defense attorney or the jury are like, you know, is that what happened? Or, you know, you I'm sure made you t- made you sure you made that report right. Yeah. Or, hey, you know, I just say something human nature. It's like some people see it differently. Correct. Well, if you're watching my body cam footage, you're seeing exactly what happened exactly what I saw from my angle. It can vary a little bit. I wear mine here. You know, my head can swivel. It's still pointing. But Straight. anytime you're turning your body just a little bit, it's going to start showing that footage. Um, works great. Um, and that's yeah. recording 24-7, right? As yeah. long as you have it on, it's recording. Yeah, 24-7. And then once you once you hit the button, um, it, start, it automatically picks up 30 seconds prior. So, you know, it's if I were to, like, hit it now, it would go 30 seconds back and pick all that up. Um, so there has been instances where <laughs> I've had to go to court and, you know, sitting there pulled up next to a coworker, say something maybe. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I it, get it. it. It's like, hey, do, do we have to play it in its entirety? If the defense attorney wants, they can say, hey, we want it in the entirety. We don't want, you know. Yeah, no, no cutouts and, that's fine, and no but, editing. And, yeah, so they say it, and then, you know, you're sitting there dropping an F-bomb or something. <laughs> it's, just kind of look down. <laughs> that you was know, me. But, but, I mean, they, they get it. It's like, hey, this was prior to everything, just two guys talking or whatever. Yep. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I'm a huge fan of them as far as from that aspect. You know, I know I know some, some people are against them. Yeah. I don't – I see the pros and cons to them both. To, ha- to having it. Yeah. Uh, but like you said, it's big if they say, well, you know, you said this. Oh, really? Well, let's go check right. the footage. And honestly, it's good for the citizen, too. I mean, once, you know. If, if, as long as they're not a piece of shit. Well, I mean, if, if you're, you know, doing something stupid that you shouldn't be doing or you're roughing up somebody that shouldn't be getting roughed up, that's not, I mean, you can go on YouTube and see some of these you know, idiot, oh, cop, yeah. idiot cops doing stuff. You can't delete it. It's there. It's it's on a hard drive somewhere else. It's not even, you know, you can go sit there and beat your camera. It's still there. <laughs> so, you know, it's it's also to protect the citizen, which I, I'm a believer in. It's, you know, um, you know, if somebody does something screwed up, they should be called out on it, you know. Um, I get it. You know, and that's part of the Safety Act, too, is now we're mandated, you know, if, if you arrest somebody and you're, hot tempered and you start beating on them or something it's your duty or i can be criminally charged if i don't jump in and pull you off um you know but which which again is a good thing and sometimes you know cops and it keeps everybody honest and accountable that's yeah. the way that i look at it oh yeah yeah 100 percent. you know um this podcast episode is sponsored by dan's diesel performance If you're looking to improve your truck's performance, efficiency, or appearance, check out Dan's Diesel Performance. They manufacture turbochargers, fuel injectors, fuel pumps, transmissions, intake piping, and much, much more. Plus, they offer all the top brands in the diesel industry. They're located in McChesney Park, Illinois. Visit their website at DansDieselPerformance.com or give them a call 
at 815-977-5865. And so I, I just think it's, especially with the times, quite frankly, it's really no different to me that they're out because ever since I was in the academy, they always said, they're coming so, probably. Well, not even that. Everybody had cell phone video. So they're like, just anticipate everybody's got their cell phone going. So ever since, like, in the last 16 years, I've just anticipated somebody standing over there with a cell phone. And here's the you thing. Know, if you're not an idiot, you shouldn't be worried about it anyway. I was just going to say, and here's the thing. If, if you're a good person trying to do your job, you have nothing to worry about anyway. Mm. It, to me, that's just to keep everybody, like I said, honest and accountable. And, it, and it's going to keep that... And it's gonna, oh, how do I word this and not sound like? It's gonna, it's gonna weed out the bad ones pretty quick. Yeah, I mean, honestly, most cops you're gonna run into are totally in favor of it. Um, you know, I'm not picking on the old, old, older guys or whatever, but some of them will be like, oh, you know, but, change is hard for but, older folks. But though. It, and and it's not because they are doing something wrong. It's and I found myself doing this. I'm not like super old, but. You know, I'm not the most tech savvy person. Like all this setup, I want to know. Oh, you know, trust but, me, I didn't know either. <laughs> but, but I'm sitting there like, uh, to them, it's like, oh, more technology I got to learn. You know, which isn't that bad to, to learn it. You know, it's pretty quick. But I, I get the same way sometimes. It's like, you know, I hate learning sometimes the techie stuff. Cause you it's get a new phone and you're like, God dang it. The old one was set up yeah. the way that I or liked it set updates. up. It's like, God damn. Come on, T-Mobile. <laughs> <laughs> It's just make, keep it simple. Yeah, I hear it. I, you get, know? I get that part of it. But yeah. Well, good man. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad you love doing what you do. Yeah. Thank you for keeping all of us safe and keeping the streets cleaned up. And yeah. We owe a lot to you guys, whether people want to admit it or not. We do. Because right, I know when uh, when you fall on hard times and there's an emergency happens, the first three buttons that people dial are nine one one, and yeah. usually cops are on the scene at that point in time too. So. Yeah, it's, I mean, like I said, it's a lot of, a lot of good guys out there and women out oh, there yeah. helping the, protect it. There, there's way more good people. people in this world than bad. Oh yeah, and it, you see it. I do. You know, I mean, a lot of times they think we deal with the worst of the worst, but we're dealing with people on their worst day, or we want to be there. So they're not bad people. Had just, a, I had a firefighter here that said the same thing. It's you know we're we're dealing with people on theoretically the worst day of their lives. Yeah, and you got to prepare for that and it's hard to prepare for that because you don't know exactly what that's going to be you don't know right. what you're walking in on sometimes that gets gets crazy <laughs> i can believe so, you on that yeah well kurt man thanks for taking the time to come over and and hang out and and uh tell us some stories and talk to us about you know the pds and yeah. things like that we uh i appreciate it i'm sure some of my listeners will too so I mean, I'll we'll have to do it again. I mean, yeah. Like I said, dude, I've always wanted to do podcasts when you're like, hey, let's do a podcast. I'm like, oh, hell yeah, I'll do a podcast. You're welcome anytime. I'd like to be over there, but I probably wouldn't know what I'm doing over there. So. <laughs> it's a few buttons now. It's yeah. just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you got a better podcast voice. But, you know, mine's got a monotone. Ah, it's good. I promise you, it's good. You do just fine. So thanks again, man. Until next problem, time, man. all right? All right. Sounds good, man. All right. <laughs>